All right. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited to uh, explain a little bit about the Natural Empire Choir Program. I tried to give a good overview and on the slides I've tried to link as much as possible so that if you go back through and you've heard something you really like, click on a link. So let me go ahead and pull up the presentation. All right, can you see that? Um, no, not yet. Okay. Do, do I need to click on something? Yeah, can you go down to share at the bottom? Okay. The mine is green. Share. I see it. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, is te technology going to work for us? Yay, there we go. Does everybody see it? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so as I said, I'm Jessica Nicholson. I'm the director of the Natural Enquirer program. I have been working with the program since 1999. Uh, the first journal, this is just a brief history of the Natural Enquirer program. The first journal was published in 1998. Since then, we've published 22 journals, 18 monographs, four climate change articles, three investigators, eight Natural Enquirer readers, a coloring book that's called Be a Scientist Coloring Book, something called NSI Nature Science Investigator, and over 250 scientists and engineer cards. You'll learn a little bit more about all of those through the presentation. We distribute across the nation and internationally um, when funding is available. Many Natural Enquirer products are translated into Spanish and either hard copy or available electronically. All the Natural Enquirer products are correlated to national education standards. And we're very big into partnering. We like to partner with different organizations on our products. Some of the folks that we've uh, partnered with in the past are the US Geological Survey, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Smokey Bear, Woodsy Owl, just to give a few examples. So the Natural Enquirer originally started out as a journal for middle school students. So the original one done in 1998 is a, a black and white edition, and it was based on research in the Southern Research Station. And so over time, it's evolved. We now have two products on the Natural Enquirer line. One is a monograph, which just features one research article. And then we also have the journal. And the journals will contain anywhere between four and six to seven articles. And the Natural Enquirer is written at a middle school level. I often find that high school teachers use it as well, but um, it is written at a middle school level. It's based on peer reviewed research. And you will see that um, I'm going to show you an example article. It has introduction methods, finding discussion. So it follows the format of the scientific article. And because it's based on peer-reviewed forest service research, it is an excellent primary resource. There are also other sections included, meet the scientist, thinking about science and the environment, and there's a factivity at the end. And again, you'll learn about more about that as we go through the slides. Uh, were kept correlated to national education standards. And the articles also contain things like number crunches, maps, glossaries, and graphs. So a lot of that extra additional material. So if you were to open a Natural Enquirer journal, this is uh, what you might see. The first section, the Meet the Scientist section, that is one of our most popular sections. The students say they love the Meet the Scientist section. And so that has grown over time. And what we have found is that the scientists um, now provide more and more information for the section. They are just asked to provide a statement about what their favorite science experiment, uh, experience was. And so as you can see, some of these people have really interesting experiences and the kids seem to really enjoy that. Uh, over time, we've added this section, you'll see highlighted with the red arrow here, what kinds of scientists did this research. And as we've noticed over time of doing this, 
some of the job careers and um, research that's being done has become more and more specific. And so that is kind of a very helpful section when it gets to more specific types of science jobs. Another section that is in every article, and so I should say that every Natural Enquirer article follows the format that I'm showing you right now. This is uh, the thinking about science section, and then you'll see we have a thinking about environment section. Both of those sections are meant to give kind of a big picture overview of what's coming in the article. And so that kind of just sets the stage for the research that you're gonna learn about. Additionally, one other thing I wanna mention is in the Meet the Scientist section, we, because we are a Forest Service program, we like to have at least one Forest Service author on an article, but then there are often many other folks involved, other scientists from colleges, universities, other federal or, or state organizations. And so we have a wide variety of different types of scientists in our publications. And uh, then next you'll see we have introduction methods. And so you see how the Natural Enquirer article is following that scientific format. We also include some other things such as here you'll see a citizen science connection. These are what we consider sidebars that we place throughout the article to maybe explain a little bit more. In the context of this article, it was from the Citizen Science Natural Enquirer. And so in every article in the Citizen Science Natural Enquirer, we had little connection boxes of uh, citizen science activities that they could do or um, a specific app they might use or things like that. Another example of a sidebar is here, what's in a song that's explaining bird songs and why those are important and what those mean. And then you'll see an example here on the methods page of how we like to always make sure we include maps. We try to increase geographic literacy by always having maps of what we're talking about and where we're talking about. And then you'll see we also include lots of graphs as we are able to from the research and then a discussion section. We also have these reflection sections throughout. The reflection sections come after every main section, like the introduction section, methods, finding, and discussion. All of those have reflection sections after them so that students can take time to reflect on what they've just read and try to make sense of the material. Then you'll see we have a glossary. Glossaries are, oops, sorry. Glossaries are included in every article. And underneath the glossary, typically, you'll see we have the original article citation. And that's really important, particularly for some of the high school teachers that have used the material. They, depending on the level of their students, sometimes they go to the original article and they show their students the original article and then they show the natural inquirized version of the article. And then they will have their students create their own Natural Enquirer article based on some type of research that they're interested in. So it's a really great way to scaffold scientific research articles that can be pretty, um, you know, intimidating to begin with. And so that's, you'll find those in the article as well. And then you'll see that we have a factivity. The factivity is at the end of every article. The factivity is meant to reinforce a concept or an idea that was shared in the article. It's meant for teachers to be able to easily implement it in a classroom, and we like to do it hands-on when possible. And then you'll see sometimes we do a factivity extension or a technology extension, depending on the type of article. In this article that I'm giving examples from, it was about uh, bird songs and the scientists actually had some recorded bird songs and so there's an activity to do with that and those are available from our website. And then over here you'll see that we have uh, links to Project Learning Tree or not links but connections to Project Learning Tree. In all of our articles we try to connect to where Project Learning Tree educators can also have additional resources. So you'll see that. Then we also have Natural Enquirer Connections. 
that is something that we have added over time because now we have so much material that oftentimes we will be writing an article and realize, wow, there's some really good supplemental material that has been written before that people could refer back to. And then you'll see we have web, re web resources here. The web resources are meant to be specific for the article. And so we tried to find things that really help support the information in the article. So what makes a Natural Inquirer journal unique? There are quite a few things that make a Natural Inquirer journal unique. For one thing, they're written directly from peer-reviewed research. So we take the peer-reviewed journal article, we read it many, 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 many times, and write it at a middle school level. Then it is reviewed, once we've rewritten it, it is reviewed by the scientist. Um, oftentimes, it is reviewed by several scientists. If there are several uh, science authors, they will all like to review it. Sometimes it's just one, but they, it will be reviewed and we get the, that feedback and apply it. And then we also have a student editorial review board. And so once these articles are put together, a student editorial review board reads them over and gives us comments and feedback. And we try to have a different editorial review board for different publications. We get them from all over the country. So if you ever know of anybody who'd be interested in doing this, please let us know. Um, the Natural Enquirer encourages critical thinking about science. As you go throughout the article, you'll see those are all those questions that keep coming up, the reflection sections, thinking about science. We try to present the science and then have the students think about it and make their own reactions to that. It's based on language arts theory and practice and it's applied to science education. So you'll see there's a lot of reading theory involved when you read the articles. Um, these articles also help the students see themselves as scientists when they have the opportunity to meet the scientists at the beginning of the article. And we have so many different scientists from so many different avenues and it's just a wide, wide variety. So that's been a really powerful thing as the Natural Enquirer has progressed through time. We also focus on science process as well as content. And one of the really big highlights, I think, is that it provides educators free resources and not just educators, anybody who would like to order the Natural Enquirer can. You can order classroom sets, you can order larger quantities for events. So we do work with a lot of organizations and the National Wildlife Federation just uh, contacted me to get some of the materials for an event that they're having. Uh, we often work with different na forest lands, national forest lands for events that they're having a freshwater festival, we'll send out freshwater natural inquires and things like that. So that is something that is available through this program. A few example topics that are found in natural inquired journals are, we have an engineering article that just came out, and that's the picture you see here, batter up, investigating what type of wood makes the best baseball bat. That was really fascinating. We have a forest products lab in Wisconsin, and they worked with the Major League Baseball to figure out why wood bats were breaking and what types of wood were best to use for baseball bats. And so I thought that was very fascinating. Uh, we also have a couple other engineering articles in, as well embedded in other natural inquirers. Um, we had, did citizen science, and then we did that with the U.S. Geological Survey. We have freshwater, climate change, wildfire. We have lots of wildfire stuff ecosystem services, bioenergy, scientific modeling, um, particularly as it pertains to something called adaptive management. Uh, World's Forest Edition, we partner with those with the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, and we have three editions of that. The third edition just came out. And then invasive species, wilderness, urban forests. And that's just uh, kind of a brief overview of some of the topics we have. And I provided a link there that will take you to look at all the ones that are available. So some other Natural Enquirer products that are available, this is because we've expanded over time because people have 
asked us for different things and um, to provide for different ages. And so one of the first ones we did was the investigator. And I'm going to just speak to that quickly because the investigator is basically this exact same setup as a natural inquirer. So you have it based on a peer-reviewed research article and you have all the sections, introduction, methods, finding, discussion, but it's written at an upper elementary school level. And so we have three editions of the investigator. We also have, for the younger audience, a natural inquirer reader series. And we have eight of these now. And these are for the pre-K through second grade audience. And in slides forthcoming, you'll see kind of what's inside a reader, and I'll talk more about that. There's the Be a Scientist coloring book, which I'll explain a little bit more too, and that's for pre-K first through first. And then there's the NSI, which is the Nature Science Investigator, and that's more upper elementary level. So what's in a natural inquirer reader? Well, here's an example of one of the readers. This was the most recent reader, and we did this in collaboration with Woodsy Owl. Uh, this is the only one in the series that's in collaboration with Woodsy Owl. However, as we go forward, Woodsy Owl is going to be incorporated into the reader series. So in this one, you meet Dr. Roman, and she studies urban forests. And so very basically, you learn about Dr. Roman's research in urban forests. And they're just like the Natural Enquirer, you have some graphs. These are much more basic sentences and stuff like that. You also have a table of contents, so you're introducing students to some of the basic setups of books and things like that, which is useful for this age group. There's also a glossary included at the end. There are critical thinking questions at the end, and in this book there's two or three, um, and so that's always included in a reader. And then a try this, which is similar to the factivity at the end of a natural inquirer, so it's an activity that applies what the students have learned in the booklet. What's in the Be a Scientist coloring book? Well, the Be a Scientist coloring book is just a very basic outreach about different types of scientists. And so you'll see here two examples. Some scientists study insects, some scientists study soil. And so there are many different types of scientists shown in this booklet. This coloring book is one of the most popular items. We get lots and lots of orders for these. This one has also been translated into Spanish. It's not available in hard copy yet, but an electronic copy of this is available. And then I mentioned the Nature Science Investigator. This one is for the upper elementary level. This is a really, really neat product that is very, very popular with lots of different groups, uh, classroom teachers, outdoor educators, lots of uh, national forest lands use them. And basically it's a, it's a smaller booklet and you meet 11 different types of scientists and you kind of basically learn what they do and then you have an activity that that scientist might do to kind of get an idea of what they might be doing. And so here, this, in this example, you meet an atmospheric scientist and you have an activity to do. And other types of scientists that are included are soil science, uh, sorry, a social scientist, entomologist, ecologist, soil scientist, ornithologist, um, ecological economist, biological scientist, hydrologist, plant ecologist, and a research forester. So there are a good range of different types of science careers represented. So this, this, um, product in particular is also used for career outreach. Uh, I've done presentations for schools for career days and stuff and they love this and this is one that goes home and is quite frequently used. Oops, I just clicked on the website. Sorry about that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is, whoops. I'm not sure. 
There it goes. Okay. Is the Natural Enquirer Scientists and Engineer cards. These are the cards I mentioned at the beginning that there are over 250 now of. Basically, these are baseball cards for scientists and engineers. And the box that you see here on the left with the red, that was the original box we made because we started out and it was mostly all scientists. And then we, start, we started having engineers as well. So we're changing the box cover to this new look so that we can include the fact that we have lots of engineers in the Forest Service. And these are all Forest Service scientists. And so here you'll see an example or two. Uh, we have Dr. Sarah McAllister, she's a mechanical engineer. And then Dr. Dexter Strother, he's a forest soil ecologist. And then the larger one is Miss Reed, a wildlife biologist. And then you'll see an example of what the back of the card looks like. And one of my favorite parts of the back of the card is when did you know you wanted to be a scientist or an engineer as the cards have gone on. And as a former teacher and having had kids do book reports before, <laughs> I appreciated one of the scientists said that she became interested in becoming a scientist when she did a book report on Benjamin Banneker. So, you know, I felt like that validated my teaching and having some book reports done. But anyway, <laughs> these are really neat cards. Um, one of the first cards I did for a scientist was she is an astecologist. And I had no idea what an astecologist was. And so that was kind of a really neat thing to find out. But she studied crayfish and in freshwater environments. And so these cards are used by a large audience, not just K through 12, we have these for all sorts of events that are handed out and people rave about them and realize how much they haven't known about careers that are opportunities that are available in the natural resource world. So these cards can be ordered in a variety of different ways. You can order a full set, which is a random set of 100 cards. You can get women in science. You can get wildlife science. And you can also, for special events or any reason, you could con if you contact us and email us, we can also send you loose cards that you can just hand out for events. And if there's a particular type of scientist or engineer that you're interested in, you can um, order those. Okay, additional free resources that I just wanted to make you aware of. America's First Forest is a DVD that you can order from for free from our website. And this DVD has won Emmy Awards. It is about Carl Schenk, who was a German forester who came to America in 1895. He managed forests at the Biltmore Estate. And he did a really good job with managing this forest and he established the first forestry school and helped launch the American conservation movement. And so these DVDs can be ordered directly from our website. And then the other opportunity is this Smokey Bear birthday card. Uh, this came from our scientist card series. And basically we did a Smokey Bear 75th birthday card about the science of wildfire and there's wildfire prevention tips on that. And these can be ordered, they come in sets of 50. And they're Smokey Bear's birthday is being celebrated all the way through the end of this year. I also put this slide in just so that you would have this available to you. I'm just going to highlight one or two. We have a lot of resources available on our website. The ones I just wanted to highlight today were that there's lesson plans available, tons and tons of lesson plans, ways to implement the articles. And so there's a link there to all those. There's also Forest Service Scientist videos, and you'll see these two pictures here on the side, developing a testable question with Rebecca Flickcroft and analyzing and understanding your data with Ariel Lugo. We had 10 scientists from the Forest Service who basically discussed all of these different ideas about how, how, you, how you test a question, how do you look at your data, and, and they talked about it in terms of their research. And so these are a really good resource for science fair projects, just for kids getting interested in what does it mean to be a scientist 
and how do you think through a scientific problem? And so those resources there are available to you. And then the rest of the resources you'll see, you can also order scientists and engineer card posters. Well, sorry, you cannot order them. You can download them. They're uh, designed 11 by 17. And so a lot of people like these, particularly educators in schools will download 11 by 17 posters, laminate them and then hang them up. So that is a product that is available. And then you'll see the other things that I've listed there for you to peruse at your leisure. Upcoming products um, in design, we have a Caves and Karst Natural Enquirer. And then we have Log Jams and Beaver Dams monograph, and this is about carbon storage. And in the writing process, we have a Forest and Agriculture monograph series, and we're partnering with 4-H on this. Uh, the first one is called To Harvest or Not to Harvest, that is the question. And it is about medicinal herbs, particularly focusing this one on black cohosh. The second one that's in writing process now is Cream of the Crop, and it looks about prairie strips and biodiversity and how prairie strips help increase biodiversity. And then we're looking at including a pollinator article of some kind in this series as well. And so if you have any ideas or suggestions about research articles that might be of interest to include in the series, please reach out and let me know. Um, in the initial stages, we have a prescribed fire monograph that is in the works, and then we're doing two more coloring books focusing on wildfire education. Um, some examples of events supported by the National Enquirer, uh, we're rolling out a bunch of products at the National Public Lands Day. We do a lot of national forests like El Yunque, STEM and STEAM events, Project Learning Tree, National Science Teachers Conference, Bio Blitzes. Uh, we partner with Great Outdoors Live and Smoky Bear Live that's coming out. So if you have an event coming up and you think some of our products might be useful at the event, please don't hesitate to email me or contact me and I'm happy to work through some of the ideas of what might be useful at your event. And then how to contact our, us. Uh, we have our website listed. I also put a link into how to set up an account you put an account on the website and that's how you order your free materials. And then my contact information, I have two different emails you can contact me at. And then I also included Michelle Andrews, who's our distribution manager for the journals, and you have her contact information. So I really appreciate the time you took today to listen to this. I hope you found some material that will be useful for you. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any of them. Jessica, this is Jim Kaler. Hi, Rachel. Jim. And first of all, thank you for uh, the presentation to our group. Uh, I wondered, you know, because what prompted our conversation uh, was the agroforestry that you mentioned briefly. I, I, I wonder if you might explain a little bit more about the idea of agroforestry so the folks here, uh, since it's an ag literacy group, can see the connection um, that that makes sure so the agroforestry um, the national agroforestry library we partnered with them to work on a series that was going to focus on agroforestry and the practices that are included in agroforestry and so as we started talking about the products that we were going to do and come up with we realized that there was an opportunity to kind of expand it and do a forest and agriculture series and look at more than just agroforestry practices, but also look at other things that would be included in agri agroforestry or agriculture and forests. And so that's kind of where the series came about. And so the first one is focused specifically on um, an agroforestry topic and then the second one prairie strips is more of a forest and agriculture um, outlook thank you sure
So Jessica, one of the things that I'm thinking of, especially in, in, in terms of my job is um, with all of the potential for many USDA folks to either move or not, does that affect any of the folks that you're working with on these or, uh, you know, in particular, will it affect anybody who's already on a baseball card? So, you mean to move where? I mean, are you still going to have the same folks working with you? Oh, yes. Okay. So, um, it, you know, some folks after they've been on a card have moved to different organizations, but on the whole, most of the people on the cards are still working at the Forest Service. Okay. Okay. And actually, it was really cute because one of the kids, I guess I really identify with one of the scientists on the cards, and she took it upon herself to look up the scientist's information on the web. She Googled the scientist and sent her a letter. And it was really cute. And so then the scientist contacted us and said, oh, I'm so glad I did this. I never thought that somebody would contact me about being a scientist. So, uh oh, really fun. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I see a lot of opportunity here uh, for those of us who work with uh, 4 of various ages. And especially as you were pointing out, all of the skills that um, leaders volunteers, adults working with kids can do, you know, in terms of communication, like you were just saying, and, and being able to talk with other people about, about things they're learning or things that they're wanting to learn about. I, this is a, I had no idea there were so many, so many options and so many resources from you. This is great. Well, good. I'm so glad that you guys will find it useful. And hopefully the forest and agriculture series will also provide some more resources for you. And if you have any ideas about topics that you'd like to see included that would fall into that forest and agriculture series, I, I do need a kind of, if you give me a topic idea, I have to be able to find a scientific research paper that could be written from it. But we are looking for, we're always looking for ideas and suggestions. So you know, please do feel free to share them if you have them. And I know pollinators has been one that many people have asked me for time and time again. And so I'm really working on trying to get a pollinator edition or a pollinator monograph done. Other questions from folks? Well, I don't see any, so thank you very much, Jessica, for taking part in this today. I think you shared a whole lot of, of information that some of us are probably gonna be really excited about the opportunity to use or to check with you and, and find out more about. Um, yes, and we should also have, coming up, we have a, a, some more cards that are gonna be added to the series and there are, several agroforestry scientists that are going to be included in that. And so um, for ag outreach events, if you wanted just the cards that were agroforestry scientists, we could certainly send sets of those and things like that. So there's an opportunity coming up with that as well. Great. That is, that is really good. Well, thank you again for being part of our Zoom session today. Um, I hope your temperature gets cooler. But <laughs> <laughs> I know 95 in Georgia is a little warm. I'd like to see a few fall temperatures come in here. Yes, thank you again for taking part. Um, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right.